We were given this territory to take care of, to live in harmony with nature, to take, to take care of it, to have respect for it. We're at the point today where, um, where things have really changed. Outside forces have come in, made us change our way of life. We had no choice. Residential schools came, made everybody forget about our ways, ridiculed them, said that they were not worthy. What's up? <laughs> the world that we live in, um, it's scary sometimes. Um, there's racism, there's all sorts of things that our people have to deal with, especially our youth, you know. Um, I think that we live in two separate worlds and it's important for us to be able to walk in those two worlds in order to be a, a, a full person. So what happens if kids are bored here? What, what do they end up doing? Smoking, drinking, spray painting and stuff, I don't know. Bad stuff, you know? Nobody's gonna be helping. They're just all crackheads and do 80s, pretty much. Yeah. Drugs is number one, and violence against women and other amongst other things, and also alcohol. It's a big one, too. Lots of drugs. Drugs and alcohol and violence. Our people had one foot in the spirit world and one but in the real world, we were given these holy ways, but I, as an individual, have to know what's right and wrong and take responsibility for it. I always uh, look back at our ancestors and how they survived in this area. And it was cold winters, hot summers. They had to work really hard during the summer to gather all the food, everything they needed for the winter. Otherwise, they wouldn't survive. So I, I look at that, how did they survive? They worked together, there was nobody that stayed back, and if they did, they didn't make it. The importance of uh, the sun dance, it identifies of who we are. That's so vital, that's so important, because that is who we are. He did identifies of who we are. That's it. Sundance, the word Sundance. It's not just a word of a, a place of gathering, a place of ceremonies. It's a place of different cultural when they all come together. Different bands or different families. That's when they all start getting together and to ident that's how they identify when they put their teeth piece up in a circle. Some people call it native religion, but it's not a religion. You know, it, it's simply not a religion. It's a, it's our way of our, it's our way of life. This is just one of many sites that was used for, for our ceremonies, for sun dances. I grew up at the sun dance um, since I was a little kid. Um, every year was spent at the sun dance. My grandmother, my aunties. My mother, they're all part of the Buffalo Women's Society. They're called Motokiks. 
Um, me and my husband are part of societies. My kids are part of society. We, we've had a big revival of our culture. A lot of the people that are involved at the Sundance, they don't speak Blackfoot, but I'm really proud of them. Usually by the time they finish uh, with their societies, they have a pretty good knowledge of Blackfoot. Our language, our culture is who we are. It's what makes us different and unique from the rest of the world. And if you have an understanding of that, um, then I think it just helps you to be more grounded and confident in who you are as a First Nations person. The language is tied to our identity. The language is tied to our land. The language is tied to um, our relationships with one another. If I claim to be uh, Kainai, uh, if I com um, claim to be Blackfoot, then I have to think like a Blackfoot person. And unless I speak the language, I can't think like a Blackfoot person. We are based upon the oral tradition, the oral language. So a lot of our, our customs, our stories, our spirituality, our religion is passed on through the language. I think it's what makes us unique. It's what makes us us. Everything that we know, the stories, um, the songs, the history, everything that we know as who we are as Blackfeet is told in the Blackfoot language. And if we lose that, we lose a lot of the meaning. Um, to those stories. You become part of the stories because Blackfoot is very animated and when you take away you take away from the stories when you tell it in English because you have to add a verb into it and so if we lose that then I guess my question is can we still call ourselves Blackfeet people? If our language dies that's a huge aspect in our culture um, and what that means is we may end up losing our culture if we lose our language. Keeping language alive, it, it, it needs to be a community initiative. So we can learn the, the few key phrases in the school, but where that needs to really be enforced is at home. It's with the people's participation that it's going to survive. You know, I have great hopes that with more young people getting interested in our culture, it's going to keep going. There's lots of different issues and problems that um, our people have to deal with, um, especially the youth. There's a lot more that you guys have to deal with than I did when I was your age. We have to look back at traumas that we have come across in the past because the residential schools that we have a lot of cultural blanks. You know, if you take out the Indian and the child, then what is here, and you put in their culture, they become a cultural blank. And so I feel like now today with gangs, a lot of the kids don't have that cultural um, component in part of them, in who they are, in their identity. Most of us in here, if it's grandparents or parents, one or another have gone to residential school. I don't want to use that as an excuse, but Sometimes our parents still do not know how to parent. They were just taught how to clean, how to work, all these sort of things. They weren't taught how to become parents. So now that's what we see a lot of in our community is the lack of parenting, the lack of support. For me, it's like <laughs> there are some youth out there that, that may not have like parents to guide them the right way, I guess. So things may not get through to them. Do you have hope for the blood tribe? Yes, heck yes. Because this is a great reserve and it needs to live on for generations to come. Because there will not be another tribe that is Ganawa. As long as you're, we're passing these knowledges down, it's going to go from generations to generations to generations to come. You know, I don't foresee it ever dying. But even though the ceremony stopped, even though the language stopped, one thing they can you can never erase as who we are, as who we are as, as natives. That will never ever die off.